part two of everything you need to know about power carbon. So last week we got the carbon on this piece. I went ahead and finished it out with the uh, turbo planer and the Mampa Tools hole, hole cutter. Um, and this week we're going to start off basically with a piece like we finished off with last week. I just kind of shaped it up with the chainsaw. Now before we get started, I'll be making one video every single week. So don't forget to click that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on my latest videos. Be doing how-to videos, um, anything that you want to see, leave a comment. So we're going to start off talking about the Mampa Tools hole cutter. This is a three inch hole cutter. And to give you an example of why I really like this tool, is I'm able to achieve what I would normally only be able to achieve with a, a wood lathe. But the thing I like about this over a wood lathe is I don't have to continuously make round pieces. I can make whatever shape that I want. Now for a piece like this, this is pretty much the only thing that I can use for carving on the inside of it. So I'll have a lot of sanding left to do to it. So my bowls and stuff like that, I'll leave about a half an inch, just about like I would on the um, bad blade to where I can come back with the turbo planer and smooth everything out and get it to this exact dimensions that I want it to be. And just to give you an example of how long this tool actually lasts, I started in June of last year. I sold right over 40 pieces and I made a total of about 50 in 2019. And I've had the same one throughout every single piece that I've done. It's been used on every single piece in one way, shape or form. And it's really held up. I, I sharpen it about every three or four pieces. And you also want to clean the backside because the wood will kind of gum up after a while. The, 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 cleaner you, the cleaner you keep it, the more you sharpen it, it's going to continue to do its job. I don't feel like it's going out anytime soon, so I've, I've definitely gotten my money's worth for, for this tool. And the one good thing about this tool is it actually slings most of the shavings out of the piece that you're cutting, so you don't have to continuously clean out the shavings to see what you're doing now on the uses as you can see i don't have the guard on this um, i feel like it's a fairly safe tool i always wear gloves and i actually recommend wearing long sleeves if you're going to be using this or the bad blade especially if you're removing bark because as fast as this thing's spinning it's it's sending it right back to you it doesn't feel good but if you live in louisiana you just have to suck it up um but this one's in a lot of ways kind of used like just like the bad blade. Uh, when you get down in corners, you just kind of use it up and down motion. Start from the top, work your way down. But as far as sweeping it, it does work best if you sweep it back this way. But like I said, it's it's a it's a pretty safe tool. I don't really feel you never really feel like you're losing control of it. So you can really just kind of feel your way, whatever you feel work, works best. I don't really feel I have a specific pattern for you for using this tool. Um, that pretty much covers the turbo planer. Now for the Mamba Tools hole cutter, what I do is um, I kind of get the general outline of whatever piece it is that I'm doing. Like I said, I always leave at least a half an inch on whatever I want to take out and I'll just take the tool and I'll just slowly work it around that line wherever I feel like that outline should be and I don't push I don't push hard I just kind of slowly on an angle make my line all the way around the piece and then once I got that covered I don't have to worry about it sliding out because I've already got my line set up on the outside so I just stay in the inside and I kind of bump the, the grinder like this. And I feel that works more effective and keeps the longevity of the tool. If you watch the other videos, you just see them kind of pushing it straight down. And what happens when they do that, is, as you can see, there's no blades on the inside of this. So it's only cutting in this outer diameter right here. So on the piece, you're gonna have a chunk of wood collecting on the inside and on the outside and it's going to cause friction and then it also causes this to overheat. So we're going to go ahead and get started 
and I'll walk you through certain areas. I'm going to try to make it short and sweet. Um, I'm going to cut out certain areas, speed up certain areas, but let's get started. Still haven't figured that out. Now when I cut this out with the chainsaw, I cut the top and the bottom as flat as I possibly could. That's going to save you more work later on. Then when I cut the sides, I cut it as close to the shape that I felt like I wanted for this piece. And you could pretty much carve this whole thing out on the outside with a chainsaw if, if you used it for a while. And you can see on this piece I got some worm holes right there. I'm not really worried about that. You can either fill that in with epoxy, filler, or you can just leave it like it is. And even though I don't have the guard on this piece, I don't recommend it. The reason I have it off is because it allows me to get deeper down in the pieces. Now this is where I make my outline. As you can see, I'm holding the tool away from the bowl. That way, in case if it does slip, it slips on the inside, not the outside. I don't want to mess up my outside shape. Now I'm about to demonstrate what I was referring to earlier on what not to do. You can actually hear the uh, tool bogging down, and that's just going to cause more wear and tear on the tool and the uh, grinder. 